when you first boot up Inkscape, it can be very overwhelming and it can be a very daunting place to look at all these options in front of you. But fear not, I am here to help you through and I'm going to help you make sense of it all. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and today I'm going to be giving you a very quick start guide when it comes to Inkscape. These contain the things that I think you need to know before anything else. So without further ado, let's get started. Now when you first start with Inkscape, you will have this window open up before any other. This is your quick setup. This is how you can change the way that the program looks. The second tab gives you all the ways that you can contribute to Inkscape and the development team making better features. Then Time to Draw is going to give you all of your recent files alongside some templates that you can use. And within each of these menus, you can select a template and you can double click. Now for this, I'm just going to go to new document. So it's going to go with my default settings. When the program opens, you will see something that looks like this. Now, before you start getting overwhelmed, let me break it down for you. The canvas and the design area. This area is the area that you will be working in more often than not and this white square that you can see in the center is my canvas. Yours might be a different size, but this is the canvas area that you'll be working on. While you are on this screen, you can hold control and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Or you can hold the mouse wheel in and move around. Number two is the basic tools toolbar. This can always be found on the left hand side with your select tool being at the top. These are all your basic tools in order to create objects on your canvas. The file bar. The file bar is where you do all your more in depth editing. From saving your files, exporting, editing and much much more. But to begin with, the only ones that you will be using is the file menu and the path menu. Next is the properties toolbar. That's the bar right here, just underneath the file bar. This is the only toolbar that will dynamically change depending on what tool you have selected on the left hand side. So at the moment I have my select tool. And these are the options that I am given. But if I was to select the node tool, all the options change. And that is because all of these options are tied to the tool that you are using. And as you select, it will dynamically change to the settings for that tool. Next is your editing toolbar. Now, depending on the version of Inkscape that you are running and your settings within your preferences, you can find shortcuts to all your editing tools right here. Next is the color swatches. These can all be found at the bottom of the screen. Right here with this grid of colors. Now, it is possible to change the color scheme if you so wish. By selecting these three lines in the bottom right corner, you get all of these and that will give you a different palette to work from in the bottom. So if I just selected this one, for example, as you can see, it has now changed the palette right here. And one last thing, the bar underneath the swatches right here is your information bar. This is going to be the bar that tells you all the information that you need depending on what object you have selected at any given time. There are specific properties 
for every object that you create. So if I was to use my squares and rectangles tool, which is on the left hand side right here, and now I'm just going to left click and drag to create a square. Now, as you can see, it's a gray square and you can see the little dot on this gray square here from the swatches signifying that that's the color that is selected. Now I can change the color to whatever I see fit, like so. But now that I have this shape selected, if we wanted to change any more properties other than the shape and the basic color, we'd need to open up certain menus. Now these menus can be found in the editing toolbar right here. The four that you will need more often than not, open your fill and stroke menu. This one, open your text and font menu. This one, opening your layers menu. And finally, this one, which will open your align and distribute menu. Now for this, I'm going to open the fill and stroke menu. Fill and stroke is for all the colors and the gradients for your object. Text is self-explanatory and that is the text. The layers will give you a full menu of all the different objects that you have in your project. And the align and distribute does exactly what it says. It aligns and distributes all your objects so they are neat and in the center of your canvas. Now, once you open up your fill and stroke menu, it will appear on the right hand side right here. And this will happen with a lot of other menus too. Now, document properties is something that you will need to learn. I've already got this open because I like to have it open all the time. However, if you haven't, there are two ways you can open this menu. First, go to your editing toolbar and select this icon right here. Alternatively, you can go to your file, scroll down and select document properties. When your document properties open, you will have these options here. Now the format, that will be pixels, inches, millimeters, points, that kind of thing. The width and the height will dictate the size and shape of your canvas. Orientation just dictates whether it should be portrait or landscape. And this last button right here, if you already have a design and it is way too big for your canvas, you can resize the canvas. Now, as I press that, as you can see, my canvas has now resized to the same size as the object I had selected. When it comes to editing things, you have to create them first. So for me to create a square or rectangle, I just need to click and drag. And by holding a combination of shift and control, I can lock the proportions however I would like. Now, if I want to create another shape, I can do that just as well. But as you may have noticed, all the corners are curved when it comes to my squares and rectangles tool. If I don't want them to be curved, I can simply come up to the properties toolbar, select this button, and it will sharpen the corners. And now, as you can see, this is why the properties toolbar is there. You can create circles. You can create polygons like stars or hexagons, for example, like so. And of course, change the colors however you would like. Moving and resizing. When it comes to moving an object, that is pretty easy. Select the object you want to move and then you can just simply click and drag to move it around. Alternatively, you can select any of these arrows and you can scale the object exactly how you would like. But also, if you click again, you get the rotation handles. Now this allows you to rotate the object in any way that you want. And again, by using a combination of control or shift, you can hold the button 
and snap around in 15 degree increments just like this. If you don't want a simple square, circle or combination of the two, you can use your pen tool. Your pen tool will allow you to draw pretty much any shape that you would like. Now there are lots of different modes for this pen tool, but I'm not going to use them, I'm just going to use the default. The pen tool works like this on a basic level. Click to start where you want to draw your line from. Click where you would like it to end. And that is your first line. Now to finalize, all you have to do is you can hit enter or you can select and then right click. And this will finalize what you've done so far. However, it will not be a complete path until you join the ends together, at which point it will become a complete shape. But you can also curve the lines. Now, instead of just clicking a start point and an end point, now if I click an end point but hold down the left click, I am now curving the line. The blue lines that you can see are simply how much it will curve and from what angle. The red line is where your line will be. And just like that, you have now made your shape. The next thing you should know about is the node tool. The node tool is under the select tool on your toolbar. Once selected, you will be confronted with nodes on your shapes. Depending on your shape depends on how many nodes will be there. Now just like the shapes themselves, you can click and drag on a node to move it to whatever position that you want. You can also click and drag to highlight two nodes and move them as a group. So there you have it my friends, the basics to Inkscape that I personally think you need to know. But what do you think? Are there any that you think I've missed off the list? And would you like to add some? Please, by all means, let me know in the comments down below. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.